Coming up on today's Code Bet Daily, there is a whole mess of sports. I think I'm looking at AFL, cricket, baseball, more. That's a lot of stuff. What about you, Alex? Now I've got the Conference League final in the Europa League, which takes place in Prague, and I start yelling about a football team to miss the finals once again. Last one, and Stats Guy's back. What's going on, Stats Guy? What are you going to look at? Back and talking about clay court tennis, uh, looking at a rising star in the French Open. He does love his clay courts. All right, player props, game picks, best bets. It's all in there. It's all Go Bed Daily. It's all really good. You better check it out. Welcome to Go Bed Daily. It is Monday, June 5, all day. Oh, geez, Mondays, I'll tell you. It doesn't get any easier when you're looking at betting stuff every day. This is nah. Code Bet Daily, and I am your host, James Clements. I'm the editor of Code Bet. That's a pretty good website. Go check it out at codebet.com.au for all your betting analysis needs. Uh, I'm joined as always. That's right. We've got the full deck of pontiffs of punting. We've got yes. Alex Donald. Yeah, what's going on, Alex? Yeah, good. Happy to turn up on time, but what a shock. The dude from Holidays has taken 40 minutes to get his stuff sorted. <laughs> so they you call him. Get these sorted. They call him Hollywood Stats Guy now. He spends a little bit of time in America. He comes back <laughs> or wait. Simple as that. What's going on, Stats Guy? Well, I don't mind that nickname, actually. Good to be here. They're not, not as welcoming as I thought, but um, yeah, happy to be here. <laughs> what about Stats Guy goes to New York once yeah. and comes back big with the Yankees, Yankees fan now. I, I now understand baseball, so uh, yeah, big Yankees fan. So they call him Broadway Stats Guy. Uh, <laughs> but it was funny. Stats Guy sat down and instantly got yelled at by Alex, so nothing yeah, has changed. Uh, yeah, I didn't miss that at all. <laughs> Nice one. All right, this is Code Bed Daily. It is Code Travel Daily, I guess. Uh, we are still remote because we don't have an office at the moment, which is pretty no. fun. But anyway, <laughs> Code Bed Daily, it is what it says on the tin. We're looking at codes. We're looking at betting. We're looking at it daily. Uh, we've got a whole mess today, actually. I looked at the run sheet. It's like all over the shop. It's awesome. So we're talking player props, game picks, and best bets, which is what we do every single time. I am going to look at a bit of cricket. Test Ooh, match cricket. You little huge. river. Championship match. This is awesome. I'm also going to uh, quickly throw in a bit of AFL. Uh, but before that, I'm going to take a victory lap because I think I hit every single pick I had on Friday's show. Wow. So, not bad. Yeah. Apart from maybe rate my multi. Yeah, I think we missed out. Yeah. Yeah, loving that new segment, by the way. It's good, good addition. Thanks. Thanks for that, guy. It was all for you. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Alex, what are you looking at today? Uh, looking at the AFL and the Conference League, which has its final this coming Thursday, and then I'm also going to talk about my bad beat. Oof, yeah. Uh, I had, like, I nailed all my picks on the Friday, but I also had, like, the one or two just bad beats. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Come yeah. On. <laughs> My heart. Uh, Stats guy, first day back. What are you looking at? Uh, a bit of French Open. Uh, we're into the corner fighters for the women's, and I think, yeah, just before that, the fourth round for the men's. On clay, yeah. So, yeah, it's on clay. On clay. Yeah, That's yeah, the only reason I'm talking about it. It's because it's on yeah, clay. Yes. And then, as Alec mentioned, I don't mind a goal scorer in the Europa Conference League as well. I swear to God, if it's the same as me, I'm going to yell. Nah, I don't even know who your guy is. <laughs> All right, player props. Uh, look, before I get into it, my perfect Friday. So I actually nailed all these player props as well. Bailey Fritch, the two plus goals. Butters, Rosie, and Wines, that uh, same game multi of 215. Yeah. All hit the 25, 25, 20. Uh, the over 171, the Finlayson to go two plus. Bang. That was over uh, in about five minutes. <laughs> 50 seconds. Yeah, he, so, was, right. he was on fire. <laughs> uh, Mitch Lewis, two plus as well. That was 340. Pow. Love that one. Uh, my game picks as well. The What was it? Titans South over that yep. smashed it was uh, like Blues 50, Demons 56, 20 or something. Blues Demons absolutely crushed the under as yeah, well. Yeah. And then uh, the best bets I had Warriors minus seven and a half. They smashed the Dolphins and Essendon I mean, North. My favorite bet of the week. Absolutely nailed that. Uh, uh, plus thirty one and a half. Yeah, Thank I, you. North. Yeah, the line yeah. was pretty. Yeah, was and good. the and the we've killed the over there too. We also killed the over on uh, Richmond and GWS. So that was great. Yep. Apart from uh, the result for me, that is. Bad uh, righto, so let's get into a player props easy gear here because we're talking, uh, look, a bit of AFL, talk, just to jump on that north for a second. Cheezel, the Cheezel, when you're watching north, geez, he stands out. The Cheezel, he's, he's just running good. around. He is awesome. He's shortening in the rising star odds as well. It's $2.25 in the one with better. Uh, Will Ashcroft's still the favorite, but it's one of those weird ones where you go, all right, Will Ashcroft, he does have some pretty big names around him. And throughout the season, does his sort of star dim just that little bit? Or does he yeah. just, you know, go on the Dacos sort of trajectory and uh, just sort of goes, oh, hang on a second. No, I'm already a superstar. Sucked in. <laughs> um, but the Cheezel, like, because he is, what, one of the three best players already on North, Probably, basically. Which is up, which is up. We've got Wardlaw coming in now. Which I was about to say, about. I have a take. Is uh, Can we back Wardlaws? I think he's better. <laughs> he was. Um, he's been unbelievable the last couple of weeks, yeah. 
he has been really good. But the Chiefs, like he just he, the consistency is what gets me. Yeah. I love him. So two dollars twenty five for him at the moment with Bet after the Rising Star. I really really like that because, uh, long, like season long futures are always tough when it comes to just like season like just simple player props, but. Uh, you have because you know injuries happen, obviously, uh, form slumps and whatever. But for two dollars yes. twenty five, where he and Ashcroft are just so like head shoulders above everybody else. Like I still love that. And Test match cricket, let's do it. Australia India, the world the final Test championship. Love this most runs first innings. My favorite player prop that I've just cast my eyes over. Manus Labuschagne. Four dollars forty-five most runs first inning. He's only gone out and dominated, dominated. <laughs> well, Morgan, he's had two century. He scored five hundred and four runs in eight innings. Absolutely Jeez. smashed while he's over there. And he's four dollars forty-five. He's like the sh- uh, second favorite for Australia. I think Smith's four ten. I love yeah. this, but if you don't really feel, if you feel like ah, Smith will get him in the end, maybe two dollars twenty-five for just a fifty for Manus. Oh, that's love- that's good. Yeah. He loves oh, playing in England. Yeah. Well, Loves playing England. Let's go. Um, and if you want to go another one, this is actually to jump on. Uh, Alex had this last week. Cummins with the uh, first wicket, uh, f- most wickets for the first innings for Australia. Yep. Still a great price. Still an amazing price. $3.35. Awesome. You can see him stealing a few of those Indian top order uh, batsmen, especially down the bottom in that low order as well. He loves bowling in England. He smashed in 2019. Let's go, Cummins and Manus. So there I we also go. have a, an addendum to throw on that because they ruled out Josh Hazelwood because uh, a slight breeze threw out his back over the weekend. <laughs> uh, Michael Nisa is now in the squad. If they pick him, I will be having something on Michael Nisa because he has just been taking wickets for absolute he fun. He loves yeah, bowling in, in England, England those at the moment. Yeah. No, he just loves bowling stats, guy. He keeps True. taking wickets He's and a can't guy, get yeah. a game. <laughs> so we've got a couple of days before that happens, so we could actually probably dig into that a little bit more tomorrow as well. Cool. Um, I'm going to make Stats Guy write a story about it. So, I, was so, yeah. we have one on, I, was, I literally had that written down, so I'm keen to write one for that. Uh, that will actually be in tomorrow's paper. Uh, no. Wednesday's paper? Checks out. Whatever. Yeah, something like that. Uh, right. All right. Alex, what about your player props? Yeah, having a look at the Europa Conference League final comes up uh, this Thursday morning in Prague. Uh, we've got West Ham taking on Fiorentina, and I'm having a look at Arthur Cabral for Fiorentina. He's got 17 goals this season, so he's been their top scorer across all competitions, but he's got nine in the conference league and he's leading that by an absolute long way. Uh, He scored last weekend uh, in Fiorentina's final game of the Serie A season. So he's coming in in really good form. They won that game 3-1. And look, I'm just looking at him to score a goal anytime at $3.50. Have a look at Bet365 when they put up the shot markets. They haven't got that up as of yet. I thought they would given it's a final, but you know what? Uh, It's a Monday morning. We'll give them a pass on that. But... (laughs) Three bucks fifty anytime goal. That's with Ladbrokes, but he had four shots over the weekend. And having a look, he's sort of having three, four shots every game. West Ham's defence isn't the greatest as we have seen as of late. So if you can get that over two and a half shots, take that. And then even the over one and a half shots on target, take that when they come up. Uh, hopefully they come up in the next day or two. But uh, we may even throw a little piece up on the side at some stage because it is Thursday morning. Yeah, oh. that's right. And also we we all now now hate West Ham. So um I'm just saying, you know, Ted Lasso sucked in. Uh right. Man, Liam, I, hope what, they, I hope they get smashed so Declan Rice just is like, I'm out of here, I'm going to Arsenal. Oh, I'm going I'm getting behind West Ham, I reckon. Uh yeah, I'm gonna have a look on the other side of the yeah, you for conference league final for and Tina. Uh Alex just talked about a goal scorer for them, but I'm gonna have a look at a goal scorer for West Ham. I think both teams can score in this one just because Fiorentina and Tina in their last uh six uh Europa League conference games i uh, have had both teams scored and so they've conceded on all of those uh yeah ben rama so Saeed ben rama the algerian superstar ben rama. he has an Zippy. awesome game ben Dri- rama dribble around. Around. Ben rama. <laughs> Kicker. i love it goal scorer in the arc. it's an awesome name i knew you i knew you'd like that jim uh he's yeah their second leading goal scorer in the commentary with four he can score on both sides of his body i think he scored in the last two west Ham conference league games both from outside the box, just unbelievable. He can dribble around players. I think he can score in this one. A bit more value than some of your favorites. Four dollars twenty. I think yeah, West Ham. If they might not win, I do like Fiorentina as Alex mentioned in this matchup. But I think they can at least score one. And Ben Rama has just been taking shots from everywhere. So four dollars twenty on Ladbrokes is a really good price for the Algerian star. Ben Rama four twenty <laughs> for the Algerian star. Nah, love it, <laughs> love it. Ben Rama, that is awesome. Um, righto then. That's some good player props. Yeah. I like the uh, Conference League stuff. That's very fun. Uh, match game picks. Now, how do we feel about the match game picks uh, for this test match? India with the top openers. So it came out over the weekend. Dave Warner. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to retire after the Sydney test. It's like, I mate, you're going to be a bit earlier. 
Yeah, you've got to make it that far. If you get knocked over for no runs in the first two tests, oh. tell your story, Walk, and you and Candice can go on Spotlight and start telling Channel 7 your story. Yes. Yeah, great. Um, this is the thing. So I think Cherney, uh, so our good friend Dan Cherney from Code Sports, wrote a, it was a pretty funny tweet. It's like, oh, it's like a uh, it's like a prime minister saying after he's won an election, yeah. he's not going to. He's going to step down halfway through. I'm like, no, no, no. That's that's not the analogy. The metaphor is it's a prime minister before he's won an election. Yeah, going, yeah before he's even got I'm in. Going, I'm going to step down halfway through. That's what this metaphor is. That's the that's the Warner <laughs> action. So right? weird. Yeah. yeah, I've never won yet. It's like, but I'm going to step down. It's like, yeah. <laughs> you've you've you had win one, one, one decent innings yeah. in two years doesn't give you what's eight tests worth of our he free grades. He's got that many left. It would be interesting. What? If he didn't score that 200 wrong, but... against South Africa, he would have been screwed. Mm. Now, I do love uh, Davey Warner. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely love him. I love watching him. When he's in flight, there's few people better to watch. And world, world cricket is absolutely fantastic. But I'm just a little bit worried in terms of this opening partnership. I feel like um, India just to, like, it does scream, all right, cool, I'm going to go quit after Sydney and I'm going to get out for, like, 12 in the first Yeah. Game. Here. And, and then the media will be all over him. One skids on a little bit low or something and he just kind of misses it and boom. Um, Stuart, or Stuart Broad prison. just turns up and puts his head down. I was like, hey, Dave, I'm coming around the wicket. See ya. Hello. Hello, Dave. My name's Stuart. You might remember me from all the times I've gotten you out yeah. before. My name is Stuart Broad. You may remember me from such films as your horror movie, a.k.a. <laughs> every time you <laughs> come walking, to England. <laughs> your nightmares. Uh, so the India top openers, $1.91. I love that one just because I feel like India, look, we know that they're going to have a bit of an interesting time. They, I mean, we just had the series in India, but coming to England, neutral venue, kind of weird. I just feel like I trust India that little bit more rather than the Australians because mainly I just don't trust Warner and that's where I'm at. Fair so enough. I don't know for India right now. Uh, the top sort of match batsman, so across the entire thing, as I said, Manus like five fifty for the across the entire game. That was bet with bet three six five. What really stuck out to me though was like I think Sharma and Kawaja are both six dollars fifty. And she's like, that's just a lot of talent between those two dudes yeah. who shown us a fair amount in the last six months that could actually, you know, make a big, 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 big statement in this massive game. So uh I don't mind that at all. I don't mind that at all. And in terms of like other sort of value names, it's pretty hard. Like Pajara is seven fifty. I don't mind that either. But yeah, I'm I kind of like like the Sharma, like the Kawaja sort of uh, double for the top match batter. Nice. Simple as that. All right, other match bets. What do you got there, Alex? Yeah, sticking to that conference league that we talked about uh, in the game or match game picks, player picks, all that. Uh, both teams have won four of six coming into this, so really good form, but sort of. Dig a bit deeper and you see that uh, Fiorentina's form is better. They rolled Roma uh, a couple of games ago. They lost 2-1 to Inter while entering the Champions League final. And even before this run of games, there was a 1-0 loss to Napoli, who are obviously the title winners in a team we've talked up all year. West Ham, they lost to Leicester and they only could beat Leeds, who paid Sam Allardyce 500000 yeah. for four games and one draw. That God, it was a good gig. Good, good gig for Big Sam. Yeah, I'm better than Pep. No, not shut up. Uh, <laughs> Looking at this, we should see some goals as Fiorentina have scored more goals than anyone in the Conference League. West Ham have also been scoring a lot of goals, but as you've seen in their last few games, they are very leaky and prone to a few goals scored against them quickly. So I'm pretty keen on Fiorentina. Head-to-head at the 2 bucks sixty-three currently with Ladbroke. You can probably That's get good. Them if you have a look. Both teams' are score is $1.85. Happy with that as well. But really what I'm keenest on is Fiorentina and over three and a half goals at $9.50. That, of course, is in the 90-minute regular time. No need for extra time here. I reckon we see a big, open, expansive game and Fiorentina lift the trophy in Prague and then head to that eight-story uh, nightclub where I fell down the stairs one night. <laughs> cool. Uh, <laughs> I feel like we could dig into that some more, but I that's really can't. podcast, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, yeah, that's the narrative podcast. of uh, <laughs> Kobe Bet just launches like Alex, just like, and welcome back to Alex's adventures of... <laughs> When, when I fell down some stairs. When I was in Kentucky in 2016. Oh, there you go. Nice. Where Stats Guy can chime in for his uh, Kentucky episode. And, and Stats Guy, but I went to Broadway on my own. Shut up, nerd. <laughs> I wasn't on my own, but that's okay. <laughs> I got married in Kentucky. Uh, right. <laughs> yeah, it was my own wedding. Sorry, I couldn't invite you guys. 
That's all right. All right, Stats Guy, what's your match game pick? Well, yeah, we're going to talk about the French Open a bit on on clay, of course, which we love. Uh, the women's quarterfinals are uh, starting uh, tonight, uh, in the morning, actually. And some uh, great, more, more great names that you like, Jim. Uh, Karolina Machova is taking on Anastasia Pavlichenkova. Um, you like it, Machova? What was that? <laughs> Does she hit the overs much? Like I'm just asking. Uh, Carol- yeah, she's she's the high ranked player, but Pavlichenkova, uh, she's now Pavlichenkova ranked outside of the top 300. But I'm going to back her in this one. So uh, she was former top 10 and only a couple of years ago, but she got injured. Only played one or two matches, I think, last last year. So she just dropped all the way down out of the top 300. But now this is her comeback uh, major uh, tournament. And now she's into the quarterfinals, Pavlochenkova. Uh, she had multiple injuries, but yeah, really playing well now. She's got a powerful forehand, one of the best returns in the game. I'm so happy that she's made it back. I think she's going to power up into the top 50 again, closer to where Mitrova is uh, ranked. Uh, Pavlochenkova is actually 19 and 6 in her last 25 matches on clay. So this is her perfect tournament. She's won multiple clay tournaments in the past when she was a bit younger, but I still think she has that sort of game left in her. And she's been three top 25 seeded uh, players to make this quarterfinal. So I know she's the underdog. In all these betting odds, I've said this before, they go by the ranking, they go by you know, recent tournaments, but she's really good on clay, Pavlochenkova. She's beaten uh, Machova in their last two meetings on clay. So I really like her in this one at $2.37. I'm not going to confuse her with the uh, plus 1.5 games and things like that, but I'm just going to go head-to-head at Pavlochenkova, $2.37 on Bet365. Nice one. Yeah, I hate doing maths. <laughs> yeah, like, no oh, maths. Just back her head-to-head. Head. So nine plus eight. Oh, God. <laughs> Point no maths, yeah. That's I'm fine. sick of maths. So, yeah, go ahead, head, Pavlichenkova. Go the Pav. Uh, righto, best bets for tomorrow, today, whenever. Simple one for me, that cricket game, this cricket match, this test match cricket. Game. <laughs> I think Australia can win it. Yeah. I think we can win it. I think I love the fact that we're playing in England. We get a warm-up game before the Ashes, essentially, against a really quality opposition. Uh, the thing is, like, I could have had these in the uh, the match markets uh the best you know the game match picks the either team to win by an innings is now unbackable basically <laughs> so oh, wow. no is like a dollar oh eight uh which is great. <laughs> so if you really think australia can put the hurt on them they're eight dollars to win by an innings i don't quite nah, it's hard in a final that happening uh <laughs> so i think this might be the sort of knuckle down and in terms of like the actual what is it australia india like the australia to win the toss australia to win I actually didn't mind that. Three dollars twenty-five. If they get in first, post a big total. That's like the weird little double that comes out of nowhere. You're like, wow, hang on a second. That's actually really good value. Yeah. You have that moment of like, but you are now suddenly betting on yeah, a coin on toss. the coin toss. Yeah, fifty-fifty. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but three twenty-five. Look, that's not bad. But the dollar ninety-five just straight up for Australia to win. I love it. I think this is a deep, talented Australian team. I think they've taken them the right approach. Had a lot of players already over in England for a pretty substantial amount of time now too. Yep. So I think Australia will come in ready to win that. And just a quick little baseball one that I uh, managed to forget about. Padres Cubs tomorrow. It's like the latest game tomorrow morning. Love this. Love, love, love this market because the Padres are absolutely going to smash the Chicago Cubs. So the Padres and over seven and a half runs for the game is $2.76. Thank you very much. Mm. This is a Padres team that is absolutely loaded up against a Cubs team. Uh, that, look, in, in terms of like former World Series champs, the drop-off has been pretty quick. Yeah. You know, they did the rebuild. They're 25 and 32 now. Uh, they're not bad, but they're also not very good. This is a Padres team that's really like, it's absolutely loaded. They've got massive names everywhere, but they're sort of scuffling along. They've uh, won five of their last 10. So Ooh. very, very scuffly, right? But, they do score runs. 241 for the season already. Want to see more of that against the Cubs as well, though. The Cubs have actually scored more than them. I love this over seven and a half, and I love the Padres to win. So two, what did I say, 275? Yep. Actually, just the 276. Look at that. Extra cent. Love that. Uh, so that's tomorrow morning, I think, at about 11. Yeah, 11 a.m. tomorrow. So I like that one a lot. We don't do too much baseball there just because of the timing. Actually, doesn't work out too bad at the moment with the show. So it's pretty cool. Uh, what about you, Alex? Best bet. Yeah, really leaning into this after the weekend. I said I hated myself for doing it on Friday and it really came back to bite me on the ass at about 10 o'clock on Saturday night. The Western Bulldogs, Jim, they're going to miss the finals. Oh. I'm going to die on this hill. I'm going to keep riding this out I can make it. <laughs> for the rest of the season after the weekend uh, efforts. What has been my one problem with the Western Bulldogs all year, Jim? Uh, you're not being able to pick any game that they play oh, Other than that, I've had one that I've <laughs> but yeah, uh, 
They can't score. They can't no. get past 80. It's like they see they're in they're in the 70s and they're like, oh God, we can't <laughs> kick a goal. It happens no. week after week. They average less than 70, uh, less than 80, sorry. They'll bang on 78 going into the weekend and they got to that score on the weekend and I just started laughing going, yeah, you guys suck. Uh, they were ranked uh, 14th in the, in the AFL for attacking going into last weekend. I haven't, uh, AFL Tables hasn't updated yet, so guys, please get to that. Thanks, Thank you. Uh, so I can get the actual numbers. I'll be but, listening. I'll be listening. But you have a look over the weekend. Just go to the AFL app or whatever stats app you use and you see the top like 13 players on the field possessions-wise, all of them except for Tom Stewart, where Western Bulldogs players. Yeah. You can have all this ball, Handball. do all this and do all that. means nothing. You can't kick a score, you're not going to win a game. The Gold Coast Suns, on the other hand, they're kicking scores and winning games. That's the difference between those two teams. If you can't blow an injury ravaged along off the park like you did for 20 minutes, how are you going to beat a good team coming into the finals? There are so many teams that are creeping up at the moment that are playing really good football that are going to knock them off. They're going to win the odd game at Marvel Stadium, which like they did against Brisbane. They beat Adelaide at Mars Stadium. But when they travel, they're going to get smashed. They beat Freo before Freo turned it around. They've got. We've talked about their draw coming up in the next month as well. It's really tricky. They could very easily lose their next four. Uh, thankfully, uh, not thankfully, the odds I had up with Ladbrokes about 30 seconds ago has just, just just disappeared. There was a two in front of it for them to miss the finals. Uh, it'll be up on the website later this afternoon, nice. bet.com.au when I do my write-up. Western Bulldogs to miss the finals. Let's go. Nice one. I like that. <clears throat> we were exchanging texts on the weekend just going, uh, I'm, I'm just saying, Alex, I told you. <laughs> But I also told you about Gold Coast rolling Adelaide and get it, getting over the eighty. <laughs> that was a that was a tough, that was a tough one for me because I think Adelaide were talk about bad beats. The fourth leg in a multi, just that one to thirty nine. Oh, I might have even had them in the line, and obviously they yeah. didn't cover. Yeah, they've lost three times Adelaide when they're up by twenty five uh, this year. It was, but it's more what we said. Stats guys, once they get out of Adelaide, they're that yeah. statistically, statistically they're a yeah. five goal worse. Like, Gold Coast are. A, a little bit similar to that. They're really good in Darwin and Gold Coast. I don't. I still don't trust them away, but we'll see. Yep. Nice one. Uh, righto. Last one. Sats guy. Best bet. Best bet. Uh, yeah, I'm going to do a future for the French Open uh, men's side. An outright winner. A bit of an unknown name compared to some of the other guys that are left, but Holger Runa. I saw him play at the Australian Open. He burst onto the scene last year uh, with coach Patrick Muratoglu, who's known as the best coach in tennis ever. He finally got him on board. Muratoglu has coached uh, Serena Williams, then more recently, sits a pass Alcaraz for a little bit. All the gun players have somehow just come from Patrick Muratoglu's academy. So he's Runa's really turned it on since he's been under uh, Muratoglu. Uh, now he's top six in the world, Runa. He's six foot three, amazing, powerful serve. You look at him and go, oh, he's just going to serve. Won't be able to move much. He's unbelievably athletic. Can hit on you know, powerful on both sides of his body. He's just a good all-round player from Denmark, just a big guy from Denmark. So it's <laughs> good to watch. Um, yeah, he dominated in the Australian Open. Uh, he's 15-3 and three on clay this year. Uh, that includes uh, a tournament win in Munich, which was on clay. So he he knows how to win on these clay tournaments. That was a smaller tournament, but I really like him in this tournament. He's had a really good run. Uh, Djok- Djokovic and Alcaraz, who are the favourites, about $2.50 for the whole thing, uh, is still left. But uh, Djokovic and Alcaraz have to play Sitsipas and Kachanov in the next round. So I think one of them could lose. I don't, I'm not sure, but they could lose. Whereas Runa has to play a top 30, uh, 30th ranked player. So a lot lower. And I think he has a bit of an easier run on his side of the draw. So you get $7.50 for Runa uh, to win the French Open. I think that's really good value uh, on Bet365 as well. So yeah, I, I just think he's really good value. He got an easier side of the draw. Loves playing on clay. He's still emerging, still young, but I think this is, could be uh, his breakout uh, tournament. Tipping a Dane. To win the French Open, yeah. that is I don't uh, mind that. No he Dane play, um, no. yeah, oh, he's got an easier side of the draw. I just don't mind him. Bit of value. Alcaraz is, yeah, people are really on Alcaraz because he's seen as the next Rafa on clay, but he's got a harder side of the draw, so I don't mind Runa. Nice, good stuff. All right, cool. Alcaraz is probably still my pick, but yeah. anyway, yeah. Uh, that's right. Uh, right, that's it. Done. Cool. Sweet. Nice. Knocks it over. We'll obviously be wrapping up a little bit of NBA Finals gear tomorrow. Uh, that game is about to start now, so there's no point talking about it for today. <laughs> uh, my my pick, uh, just just for I think posterity's sake, because I think we taped before game one last Friday as well. Uh, so I think for game two, the pick was going to be the under and still Denver to win. So the under under dropped substantially uh, heading into game two. I think it was by five points, which is pretty chaos. But game one went under a little, like pretty handily. It was two nineteen. I think it got down to two fourteen. I still think Denver can cover. I think yep. it's eight and a half. The under is Agreed. still there at fourteen. So I think. Uh, this is one where 
it gets a bit tighter. We've seen Denver play pretty tight game twos and all of them gone under. So nice. <laughs> God damn. Just dying <laughs> over here. Right, Smooth button, it. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Done for today. Cobed Daily. We'll be back on deck tomorrow. So get right around the show. The full compliment. Back on board. You love to see that. So get right around every episode that we do. We have NRL shows, AFL shows as well. No longer EPL shows, but that's okay. We might have like a little ashes breakout each Ooh, week, mate. That's a good idea. Uh, either way, like if you're on Star at all, and Jack us a follow across all the socials, YouTube, Face, EIG, Twitter, TikTok, and Twitch. Now the Stats Guy's back. We're going to pit him, Marcus, and Leo together in a battle royale <laughs> on AFL 23. Uh, cool. Sending any questions, any comments, uh, you know, celebrate the fact that Stats Guy returned seemingly unscathed, but probably we just like <laughs> a rough case of syphilis or something. But either way, uh, <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> thanks a lot, Alex. Yeah, cheers. Thanks, Stats Guy. Thank you. And thanks to me for producing this one. Uh, <laughs> Gerald just off there making sure that he's uh, got everything, you know, all his, all his ducks in a row, though. So thanks, Gerald. Uh, thanks to me. And what do we say, Stats Guy? Yeah, but responsibly. All right, mate. All your picks come in. Happy bunting. We'll catch you tomorrow. Go bed daily. Out. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.